Howdy folk and welcome back once more to Let's Play Might and Magic 2. As per usual, we are just jumping on in here. And now that our party is second level, we can maybe survive a little more uh, than just one or two fights out in uh, the world here. So, where we last left off, we had essentially just spent the entire last session leveling from first to second. Really, nothing has happened since then, and all we're going to do today is get to third level. At least, I don't necessarily want to say that we're going to do it today. Um, my goal for this episode is to get to second level. Third level, rather. Uh, which, in some party members' cases, is fairly soon, but in others, it's a little ways away. Once we're third level, I figure we'll be okay to complete the quest down in the dungeons. Uh, and I suppose we can actually get it and maybe poke around down there a little now. Probably gonna end up with us getting dead, but, you know, every little bit. The humble wizard Norden asks, Will you do me a service? Yes, of course we will. Numerous rewards will be yours if you retrieve one of my magical golden goblets ruthlessly stolen by the dreaded goblins who dwell in the cave below. Alright, so we've been given a quest. High action gameplay. So the, the dungeon is actually right here. Stairs to the cavern. Descend? Yeah. So it's dark, you know, makes sense, right? So we will go ahead and switch to Rove. We will cast... What is light for a sorcerer? First level, fifth spell. And now we can see. So as you can see, dungeons are town just under a different color. Beware danger! The moon phases of Kron last 60 days. This is actually pretty important. Uh, there's a lot of stuff written on walls in this game. And a smart person would chronicle all of it. I don't need to because A, I have walkthroughs, and B, I've done it before. So, there's an encounter here, and there's an encounter here. These are going to be much more nasty than in town. In fact, we're probably going to die when we try it, but hey, let's see what we got. Some new fight thieves. We'll actually try this. All right, so they, they got initiative on us, and they beat the hell out of Swell. That's okay. Rove, go ahead and throw some fiery death out there. Swell murder. Brunhilda murder. Chunk, look busy. Gold leaf, heal swell. Alright. Uh, yeah, I guess we have enough that I can throw some indiscriminate fiery death with Rove. Alright, we actually killed him. That frankly surprises me. Some golden gems. Okay. So, the goblins are right down here. However, each square is a fight. And they start off really easy, like this one with just eight goblins. Which, this isn't a nasty fight at all. It's just, you know, numbers. So we will... we'll see how this fight goes. I'm fairly confident in our ability to take these guys. Uh, but then I'm probably gonna run away. <sighs> these goblins hit pretty hard. Like... I don't know. It doesn't help that nobody in the front row can hit them. Damn it, Swell. Oh, and I just wasted Rove's turn there. He could have thrown Fiery Death, damn it. Yeah, we got these guys. And I just wasted Rove's turn again. Little less than worried at this point, though. Yeah, we've got this. We'll just quick through it. 266 XP is nice. Party gets cooked a little bit. Some root, a witch's broom, which lets us cast fly, uh, and 39 gold. And as you can see, our party is a little bit worse for wear, so we're gonna pussy out, because that's what we do. We're gonna sleep so that everybody can heal up. Uh, and I'm gonna go to town, and we're gonna save. We're not going to be going back in there, because that dungeon is scary, and we're not high enough level for it. Once we get second level spells, I'll be a little bit more confident. Mostly, though, I'm looking for the hit points for my front row. Uh, and I want to kind of get everybody geared a little bit better. So, fly, the way it works in this game, is really honestly more akin to, like, a teleport spell, I believe. I think. Fly to, yeah. So what that will do, like, A to E lets us choose what zone of the world that we go to. It's, it's complicated. Freaking 18 experience points away for Brunhilda and Goldleaf. I love it. Well, let's kill some, all right, giant beetles. These actually might be a tough fight. We'll see. How much health do you guys got? Eh, you got more than nine. 
I have on my other window the weapon and item lists open so that I don't have to constantly be looking in the manual. The Might and Magic 2 Shrine at RPGClassic.com is an amazing reference for anyone with an interest in this game. Or anyone just curious to see just how much crap there is in it. Like, just take a look at the monster list. This game has a lot of enemies in it. Alright, so 160 XP. We're gonna rest again. We're gonna come in here. We're gonna train Brunhilde. Gather that gold. Train. Train. Alright, so you'll know that she gained hit points as well as new spells. So this goes under, like, D&D rules, where you'll note here that there are nine levels of spells, and as with old D&D rules at levels 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on, uh, you unlock new spells. Now, just because you might unlock a level of spells at a certain point in the game does not mean you will get all of the spells. Like, generally, most people recommend that by the time you even start the main quest in this game, you be, like, on the low end in the high teens level-wise. Uh, so you'll have at least a handful of spells, like, on every level, but some stuff you only get through quests, and, like, they're quests that you're not going to be able to do until you're high level. Like, for example, uh, the Lloyd's Beacon spell lets you set a waypoint and then teleport back to it at any point. It's a second level sorcerer spell. So you can get, like, a character to third level like nothing. You see here it took us, like, in total about 40 minutes of playtime. However, by the time you get that spell, your characters are probably going to be in the 20s level-wise. So it's kind of interesting how they do it. Anyways, for second levels, Goldleaf knows 1, 4, and 6, which is Cure Wounds, Pain, and Silence. Cure Wounds is basically just a better heal spell. Pain is actually her first damaging spell. And Silence is generally useless, but she has it. And you can actually come here, and you can see that if we switch over to Goldleaf, she can learn spells. Uh, she can learn spell 1-1 one, one, and 1-2 one, and 1-6, one, which are Apparition, Awaken, and Power Cure. Uh, Power Cure is actually better than Cure Wounds, and the way you know where these are is, like, this is the spell level on the left, and the one on the right is which spell number it is. Uh, and the reason Power Cure is so expensive, I'm going to teach her the other two. Uh, the reason Power Cure is so expensive is that unlike First Aid and Cure Wounds, which heal for a flat amount of health, Power Cure's effect scales as you gain levels. However, its mana cost also scales, and it costs gems to cast. So we're probably not going to be leaning too heavily on Power Cure, uh, at least a until a little bit later in the game. So... Like I said, we want to get people to level. How much do you guys need? <sighs> Alright, 1100 and change. So they essentially need 4000 experience points. Man, I don't want to do it, but we should probably be in the... <sighs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to throw us into that, that hellscape. We'll try fighting these men-at-arms and see how this goes. This is probably... I wouldn't say an unwinnable fight, but this is going to be a hard fight, especially since all five of them can attack my front row but only two of my front row can attack them. Although, uh, Devon and Chunk both have range attacks, so it might be okay. I think we might have this in hand. I'm mostly looking towards fighting humanoid enemies because I want to get, like, loot. Like, actual loot, you know, items and stuff. Because it's much easier to find stuff than to buy it. Because the shop inventories... Their, their daily specials change as time goes on, uh, but their baseline stock does not. So, fighting humanoid enemies like this is it's a good thing. Plus, you know, it builds up our gold reserves. Even when Chunk botches the traps and electrocutes half the party. Okay, Devon just went down... That's okay. Just heal everybody up. There we go. 300 XP a piece. And a large shield, which I want to say is actually probably useless, because I don't think anybody that matters is going to be able to use it. So we're actually just going to rest. We'll come here. We will go into Swell's inventory. And we're going to actually sell both of these. I'd rather have the gold for that broom than to use it. And so you can see here that if we come into the specials, this is the stuff that's going to change every so often. And you can see that it's plus one. So these will be better than usual items. 
Uh, but realistically, no, this is too great, I don't think. We have a scythe, which... Uh... I don't know. I think a scythe is two-handed. A scythe is, in fact, two-handed. It does nine damage. However, it's plus one, so it does one to ten damage instead of one to nine. But it's also got a bonus to attack because it's plus one. Eh, I'm not going to use it. One thing I am going to do, though, is we're going to switch to Chunk. And we're going to buy him two Thieves picks. Blow all of our money on Thieves picks. And we're going to equip both of these. And you can see they bumped his Thievery up from, what was that, an 11? Yeah. From an 11 to a 41. Which... If he were an actual thief, is probably, I don't know, fairly close to where he'd be anyways at this level, just by gaining levels. I, I shouldn't say that. Thieves are, however, much better thieves that are at thieving than robbers, I should say, are much better at thieving than ninjas are. But Chunk being in the back row, he's not going to need a whole heck of a lot. And he still asphyxiates the party. We did, however, get a, a large knife. And some sludge beasts we're gonna run away from. Dude, this is not something. This is the poor man's portal. This is how you get to different towns. Nordana yelps, be gone, stranger. We'll talk to her later. And I think these all have random encounters in them. You can bash the doors down. And I wanna say. One of these is uh, I thought one of these was a false wall. But apparently I'm wrong. Hmm. Might be in here. Yeah, there we go. So in the back of the blacksmith shop, we have a false wall. And naturally, there's no way to tell beyond you know, stepping on it. And we got ambushed by some fools uh, who have attempted to sleep my entire party and failed. So we murdered them. And we found a lantern, which is a free light spell, which we're just going to go ahead and sell. There you go. And this is like one of the things that I like about this game and one of the things that I liked about later Might and Magic games is like you can play these as like tactical turn-based games and there are points where you need to but in other cases like you just hold down control A and you murder everything and it's like hey look the fight's over and we win. Oh no. The party got slept. Come on guys. There we go. We're fine. Oh shoot. I, sort of sh I should have searched there. We just missed out on some treasure. As soon as you move away from a square that has loot on it, you lose it. All right, so people are getting close to leveling here. This is getting clutch time. Come on, guys, just kill them. Just kill them. There we go. Everybody sleep. I bet we got some people ready to level now. Do we have enough money? That's the problem, is, is having enough money. Devon level, Rove leveled, which is excellent. Uh, he's not going to get AoE, like, proper AoE spells for a while, so it's not, like, hype beast mode here, but it's extra damaging spells. So he got 2-2, which is Electric Arrow. 4 and 5 are Jump and Levitate, which I actually don't... Well, Jump lets you skip a square, but it's less useful here than in later games. And Levitate, I think, just lets you avoid pits... Jump moves the party's two squares forward, providing there are no magical obstructions in the way, and levitate raises all party members above the ground, protecting them from various dangers for one day. Okay. Yeah, so he's got electric arrow, which is better ranged combat, I guess. Most importantly, he's got hit points. Like, that's that's the big thing, is we get some muggers. I'm gonna avoid this fight, because I'll probably just steal all of my money, and we really don't have a lot of it to begin with. Conjurers will beat my ass. Brainless ones are also, I think, pretty tough. If I really wanted to mon like money, I'd fight in the arena. There's a lot of skeletons, but we're gonna try it. Because we have offensive magic. And they're not affected by it. Because esports. Thankfully, their accuracy is kinda hot garbage. Although, by the look of things, so is my party. Gold leaf. Eradicate? Like, a good number of them, and by a good number, I mean all of them. Most of them, acceptable. All right, we killed them. That was 300 XP right there alone, and a, enough money, probably, to level everybody else. Who else needs it? Chonk. 
All right, so everybody's level three. We're 15 minutes in. Let's see if we can go do this damn quest. Okay, Rove. What was light? One, one five. We got light, and I, I'm tempted. Like based on the music last time, it was a little quiet, so I think I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. Here, we'll come here. It's hard to tell. It's really hard to balance. And the amount of effort I want to put into editing this is essentially nil, as with most of my Let's Plays, so. Merchants? All right, we can kill some merchants. These guys aren't a threat at all. That, however, is... Scimitar, Silent Horn, half my party's dead. We'll sleep. Uh, I don't... I don't want to say that there are no random encounters in this, but I don't believe that there are random encounters in this when you sleep. I don't think. All right, so we have the goblin fight again. These things hit so hard. Freaking 12 damage. 16 points of damage from Rove with an electric arrow there. That's appreciated. Got some healing thrown out there. So much damage. Melee them down, guys. Come on. Oh, come on, guys. It's like one goblin. There you go. Chunk, you are really disappointing me. Antidote Ale. Oh, shit. Chunk's dead? Chunk managed to get himself dead. Because he's just that that professional, apparently. Alright, so we gotta, we gotta pull out... That's what she said. Thanks, Captain Planets. I know you're here in spirit. <sighs> Restore condition. And as you can see, the price on it went up markedly since we've gained levels. And while my mind is on it, I want to come here. And yes, we want to enroll in the local mage guild. Random sewer rats, sure. We'll beat these things down. Let's see, Rove can learn 1-1, one, 1-3, one, one, and 1-7. One, 1-1 one, one is Awaken, 1-3 one, is Energy Blast, and 1-7 is Sleep. I'm gonna teach him Sleep. And he can learn 2-3, which is Identify Monster, which is actually completely useless. But damn it, I'm a completionist, so we're gonna buy it, along with Awaken. Awaken, super situational. But hey, we got it. All right, we actually don't want to use this right now. Because like in all Might and Magic games, spell durations flip over at like, you know, 6 in the morning or whatever. So we want to start our adventuring day early. Neophyte Thieves. So since we surprised them, we can attack, bribe, hide, or run. If we run, it will return us to where we entered this area, so back to the dungeon. But it will leave an encounter in this square. So the next time we come here, it might not be Neophyte Thieves, which I am comfortable fighting. So we're going to attack them. Uh, and just because we surprise them does not mean that we automatically get to go first for whatever reason. Uh, however, we are going to go ahead and maim these dudes. I want to kind of hold off on necessarily having... Having Rove throw too much death magic, because I want him to have it for later in. Like, we might have to hit fourth level before I'm able to do this. I will give this... God, it would help if Chunk could stop failing on these goddamn chests but he can't he just can't help himself oh this is a bad fight the healers in on it I'm just gonna we'll just hold down attack and see what happens come on there we go we're gonna rest we're gonna search chunk's gonna fail because that's what he does a spear and some scale mail all right next fight as you can see here there are more goblins and there are orcs we're gonna try it orcs i want to say orcs might have ranged attacks i don't remember we're again going to just hold down attack and as you can see here this is not going well so let's start throwing some fiery death all right gold leaf you have cure wounds so we'll have you cure wounds on Swell, bring him up to 15. All right, it does not look like rain, uh, like um, like orcs have ranged attacks, which I'm thankful for. And we're gonna focus on the orcs because they're more dangerous than the goblins are. Uh, not by a lot, but 
every little bit, you know. Get the fawn healed. Oh, uh, gold leaf went down. That's troublesome. And rove went down. All right. And now we're on auto attack and probably going to die. Yup. <sighs> it looks like we're going to need to hit fourth at least. Maybe fifth level before we go in there. And that, as you can see, the XP requirements go up quite a bit. However, I think we can afford an arena ticket. Let's see, miscellaneous. Yes, a green ticket is 10. We will buy one. And the way arena tickets work is you come back this way. You don't come back this way. I went the wrong way because I'm a doofus. You want to come back this way. And the arena entrance. And we come and stand in the center. And you can see that the Games Master accepts our ticket. Let the battle begin. Now, this throws you into a fight that you can't avoid. However, if you survive it, you get XP, you get money. It tends to be worth doing. Uh, later on, I will be abusing arena fights as a way to level much more quickly than I probably should. Well, I might. I don't know, I'm currently undecided on how I want to handle cheese leveling when I eventually have to do it. It's either going to be black arena ticket battles with potions of skill, or I'm going to cheese queez and arts. We'll see. So 200 XP, and as you can see, as winners, we receive 200 gold. So there you go. That's not per character, that is just a flat 200 gold. Good way to earn money in the early game. Green arena battles aren't too hard, uh, but they're there. And I think, yes. And we will teach this to Rove. So he learned cartography, which lets us hit M to bring up our actual map. And since we have cartography now, he will plop down an actual map so that I can refer to a map, you know, when we're not just running around with Wizard's Eye on. We already have that. Mountaineering is something that we will want, but it's something that is currently unaffordable to us. Let me go ahead and just really quickly get the outlines here. That's the poor man's portal. That's a tavern. That's the encounter room. Hey, random man-at-arms, you guys are dead. 100 XP. Chunk doing what Chunk does best. Dove's Blood Spike Club. Ooh, and a skill potion. Nice. Skill potions cast heroism on you, and what heroism does in my magic games is it gives you, like, levels. Like, temporary levels. Uh, and heroism, let's see, for a skill potion, is five levels. So, you know, every little bit, and this I think is where we leave town, so we don't want to go that way. We will run from the venomous snakes. Nah, kobold captains can be tough, but we'll try it. I'm not entirely... Faith, like, I don't entirely have faith in my party's ability to get through this unscathed. Oh, Chunk critical for, like, almost 30 points of damage there. That's why I have a ninja in the party. Like, I know thieves are better thieves, but I need that combat brutality, and ninjas bring it so well. Come on, shoot, rove, throw some death magic. Yeah, we've got this. Once our party starts picking up multiple attacks, our damage will go up substantially. Especially in Chunk's case, like, Chunk in the long term probably won't, like, overall do the most damage. But he's probably going to have, well... I don't know, it depends on how long it takes for me to get Brunhilda a really good weapon. If I get Chunk, like, a really decent, um like Katana or Naginata early, he is going to be just a killing machine, like an absurd killing machine. And this has vocals, which means it needs to go because I don't have any songs with vocals in my music playlist for Vigi games because damn it, nobody wants to hear vocals. You're here for me. All right, which is cats we want to avoid. I seem to recall them casting spells or something. Brain eaters we fear. Bloodsuckers, I'll try. We'll try. I don't know if these things have a thing with them or if they're just bats. With clever names. They don't have hit points, though. So that's holding down Control A for maiming. Hold down Control A for XP. 
All right, Goldleaf and Brunhilda are nearing a level, so I think we'll probably level them and then call it. I'm not gonna fight more Brain Eaters. We'll just come in and save. Get these close range fights. Creepy Crawlers are a no-go. Beggars? Oh, you bet your asses we'll beat on some fucking crippled people. That sounds horrible, but it's what we're doing. However, in this case, the beggars are beating the hell out of us, so... We gotta unleash some fire upon them. And look at this, they're like flailing at us with their... their canes. And Brunhilda, like, I just imagine this like swarm of feral beggars just like descended on her. Something like Night of the Living Dead or something. Choke on them! Choke on them! Uh, let's go ahead and heal Chunk up. We should be able to kill these things without too much problem here. Come on, guys. Just, I was gonna say, they, they just need to hit. 500 experience points. Chunk opened it. 75 gold pieces a piece. We're sitting on decent, decent returns here. All right, we got some extra spell points. Man, these guys are so close. Like, 1800 XP is not a lot. So, I guess we can get everybody to level 4. Soldiers, I think, will probably beat my ass. So, we're not gonna pester them. If this were just hungry plants, I would consider it, but burglars, I believe, steal your money and I don't wanna lose all of my gold. Some friars, though. These guys, I don't wanna just auto attack through this because these guys cast spells. And they also apparently have hit point pools on them and my melee. Oh, I noticed that Brunhilda actually has two attacks. Nice. Let's see, what is pain? 2-4? Two, 2-4. Four? Two, four. Eight points of damage. Not a lot. And it's more expensive than Rove just throwing, you know, magic darts or whatever, but eh. Alright, 133 and they have no loot. I suppose that makes sense, them being friars. We will fight poltergeists. Okay, 11 points, nice. Oh yeah, that turn undead doing work. 250 XP. I seem to recall brain eaters are really nasty, I don't know why. I think they just can't, I was gonna say, I think they just can't sleep. So like, this isn't bad at all. Like, there you go, brain eaters, folks. We got a gem. Oh, we got one gem per character. Now I want to save. Getting turned around. I can't imagine how you poor guys feel. Alright, we're slowly inching towards another level. Killer cadavers. Ah, shit. I think these things frenzy. These things, uh, if they're what I th if they do what I think they do, and I might as well show it off here. Some monsters in this game have an attack called frenzy, and what is it? what it does is it damages your entire party and then kills the monster. And I believe these things can frenzy. Yep. Oh, they explode. Eh, damage is only three. Damage is 16. Rove's gonna go down. But we won! So there's that. And we got some gems. Yeah, we also need food. So yeah, frenzying and explosions are essentially the same thing. It damages your whole party, monster dies. Like, crazed natives are, I think, another one we'll fight. It's stuff that we can fight in, like, the caverns under town. Things that I'm... They're mostly just, like, they're gonna kill your back row. That's just the way it is. And if there's more than one of them and, like, your back row's down, like, they die because it's an AoE and there's no way to avoid it. It's horrible. Cudgel and Torch. Greedy snitches. Oh, yeah. We're gonna murder you. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. There we go. A ray gun. So, like the last game, this one still has, like, the kind of... Well, I should say, like, all of the games. This one still has kind of, like, the future tech. I think this casts Energy Blast. Ray gun. S13, which is, yep, Energy Blast. But the more important thing about ray guns is that, in addition to be some being something you can use, you can actually equip them. And if you equip them, they give you plus five accuracy. So for the time being, I'm going to equip it on... Actually, you know what? No. We're going to give this to Devon. 
and he can, can equip the ray gun for supreme accuracy. Later, uh, we'll have other more interesting things that we can equip our party members with, uh, but for the time being, five accuracy is nothing to sneeze at. I'm gonna come in here really quick and sell stuff. Scimitar can go a silver horn. A uh, silent horn, rather. Don't need that. Antidote ale, we can get rid of Dove's blood. Yes, it's 4 2 for clerics, which is air transmutation. I have no idea what that even does. Spike club can go, and the skill potion, we are not going to sell for anything. Those are going to be very important. And actually, give it to Rove for the time being. Conjurers are a no go. Foot soldiers, probably also a no go. Not entirely sure. Burglars, sure, there's two of them. I think we can take this. Come on, guys. Just thank you. Ugh. Thanks, Chunk. 350 gold per character. Did they steal? No, they didn't steal all my money. Holy shit, we just made a lot of money there. All right, people are getting close to leveling. We're gonna save. Make that much money, you bet your butts we're gonna save. Killer cadavers, nope. Skeletons, sure. And, like, right now, it's not too bad to just be doing this, like, where I'm like, oh, I don't want to fight this fight, let's run. Later in the game, this is going to become a problem, because resources are not going to be as immediately refreshable as they are here. Like, I'm not going to be able to just be like, oh, we'll just go save. Like, when you're out on the overland and stuff, like, just running from every fight is generally not a particularly good strategy. Alright, so these things are just immune to elemental damage, so this is all on my front row. There we go. 400 XP apiece. And 79 gold pop, which isn't bad either. And we might have some people level ready? 12. 12 experience points away. You jerks. So yeah, like for now, it's easy to just kind of troll around like this. And I level up, and I'm sure it's intentional. Here, we'll just see if we can fight through this. Yeah. But later in the game, this is not going to be a viable way of playing. I'll actually have to pay attention. All right, let's level everybody up here. Everybody that can level up. Chunk needs a little bit more XP. Chunk needs 41 experience points. Sure, some inept wizards. These guys have one hit point, I believe. But can throw offensive magic, however. <laughs> They're not going to have the chance to do so. Instead, Chunk's going to hit our party with some offensive magic. Alright. Chunk, gain your level. Okay. So everybody's level four. We're going to go to the tavern. We're going to sleep. And here's what I'm going to call it. So as per usual, folks, thank you for watching. And I will see you all next time. We're in ideally will complete the quest under middle gate. And that's probably all we're going to do because once we finish that quest, I'm probably going to do some heinous amounts of grinding. I would expect, we'll probably finish the quest and then I'm going to grind us up to either seventh or ninth level. We'll see. Anyways, that is next time. Until then. <laughs>